Hello everybody, welcome back to CNS Corvettes in beautiful sunny Sarasota, Florida. It's your Corvette buddy Lyle here to talk to you about more interesting, exciting, and hopefully helpful Corvette stuff. Today though, not such a great subject. If you haven't heard, GM has a very, very big problem. Let's talk about it. My friends, my Corvette family, I want to come out and thank you again for all of your support on the channel. We recently just achieved 85,000 subscribers. As you know, if you watch our channel, we are pushing hard to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2025. And thanks to you guys, we are well on our way. But we still have a little bit more to go in the last couple of months of the year. So if you watch our channel and aren't subscribed, please do. It really helps us and it costs you nothing. And if you know other Corvette people who may not be familiar with the content that we put out, talk us up a little bit. See if we can't get us to that 100,000 because the best Christmas present Lyle could get would be that YouTube plaque. It's something we've been working on for over a decade. And man, I just, that would be the best Christmas present ever. So thank you for your support. Spread the word. We'll talk to you soon. Lately in the news, we've been hearing a lot about the problems GM is having, specifically with their 6.2 liter V8 L87 engine. Now, first and foremost, this is not the engine in the Corvette. So let's set the Corvette aside. We're just talking about GM products like the uh, 21 to 24 Silverado, the 1500, the Tahoe, the Suburban, GMC Sierra 1500, Yukon, Cadillac Escalade, blah, 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 all those, right? As of late 2025, they have had a recall on these engines that covers roughly 597,000 vehicles in the U.S. and 720,000 globally. Think about that. That is a huge number. What's the problem? Well, problem is these engines are failing extremely prematurely and often in a spectacular fashion. The root cause of this is improper machining on crankshaft journals and connecting rod bearings at the factory and improper cleaning of the entire assembly before it is filled with fluid and put into a vehicle is causing extreme bearing wear, uh, oil pressure loss, knocking, seizing, or straight up throwing a rod through the block. You know, basically people driving their one or two year old car that they're, that they're still making payments on hefty payments on and they just driving down the road with their family and engine just quits and will never run again. Let's drill down and talk about what this defect actually is and what it does. Tiny metal debris or rough crankshaft finish causes oil starvation and bearing damage. Bearings get hot when they're not being lubricated, which cause things to start getting loose and fall apart. Failures can happen without much warning, sometimes as early as 5,000 miles onto your new GM product. Owners report ticking, knocking, low oil pressure, or total shutdown. Uh, again, this only affects the L87 6.2 liter engine, not the 5.3 liter L84 or the LT2 or the supercharged LT4. So the logical question now is, what is GM doing to remedy this problem? Well, so their <clears throat> official solution is, they have the, car, the truck come into the dealership, the techs perform oil pressure and internal bearing checks using a new diagnostic criteria set, and uh, assuming that it passes inspection, the engine remains in service but receives new 0W40 oil spec, which is a thicker viscosity for better bearing protection. If the outcome is that it fails the test, full engine replacement with corrected process long block assembly. So according to GM, they have corrected the problems they were having in their manufacturing facility. All of these engines that are currently being produced in 2025 and later do not have this issue. Uh, they are guessing that about 3% of engines will need to be replaced. Uh, between you and me, my guess is that number is going to be a little bit higher. Um, average service time is one to two days for inspection, one to two weeks if the engine replacement is required. And this is the important part, subject to parts supply. Here's the problem. GM only has one supplier for its crankshafts for this engine. And when you're talking well over half a million, 700,000 vehicles worldwide, no company, no one company can make enough crankshafts above and beyond what they're supplying for regular production to solve this problem quickly. 
So I know that a lot of people, customers have been very dissatisfied with GM in that the problem has been identified in their vehicle. They're still making payments on this vehicle, but GM's like, yeah, when we get the parts, we'll give you a holler. Uh, that's not what I'd want to hear. I'll bet it's not what you'd want to hear. So the timeline of this whole thing is that a, a dealer bulletin was issued in April of 2025. Notification of owners of the problem began in June of 25, and field repairs began during the summer of this year and continue into 2026 as engines become available. Now, one of the things they are doing that I will give them some credit for is all vehicles under this recall now carry a 10-year, 150,000-mile powertrain warranty from the original in-service date. And the warranty applies to both inspected and replaced engines. So at least they're doing that right. The owner and dealer reactions to GM's strategy for solving and resolving this issue, um, kind of mixed. Uh, some owners question whether the Oil specification change truly fixes the underlying wear issue or if it's just kind of kicking the can down the road. I'm thinking probably the latter. Dealerships report initial part shortages from GM, but GM has ramped up production at their Tonawanda engine plant to meet demand. Still, you can only do so much in one day with so many hands. I don't care how good your factory is. The downsides, I guess you could say, switching to the 0W40 oil does increase the cost of an oil change by about $20 to $30, which I think anybody would happily pay to not have this problem. Uh, many customers experience appointment backlogs due to the volume of vehicles needing inspection and repair. Here's where the bigger problem for GM comes into play. The NHTSA has opened an, an engineering analysis in January of this year following multiple field failures. As of October this month, the probe now covers an additional 286,000 GM vehicles, possibly sharing components or machining processes. So now you're talking knocking on the door of a million vehicles that are going to have to be at a minimum inspected, and a given percentage of those are going to require new engines. If further defects are confirmed, GM may expand the recall beyond the current 6.2 liter L87 spec. Again, I highly doubt this is going to affect the Corvette specifically. At least the engine problem won't. Guys, they're talking about this recall, this solution, costing somewhere between two and three billion with a B dollars. GM's going to have a very difficult time absorbing that. Uh, there's also going to be class action lawsuits and other things that could be coming to the fore that are going to make GM surviving this very, very difficult. Um, many auto manufacturers are in deep trouble right now due to the economy and due to the kind of disappointing performance of the EVs that they've all heavily invested in. So I don't think the Corvette is going to be affected mechanically by this, but if GM gets into serious financial straits, that could be a real problem for our Corvette fans down the road. So we'll have to kind of wait and see what happens, but I just wanted you to be aware that GM does have a very, very big problem, and hopefully Corvette as a model can be separate from that, or at least insulated. Tell me what you think. I'm sure that you've probably heard about this problem. If you have opinions about it, put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear your take on it. I think it's extremely disappointing from a quality perspective. Uh, we expect more of GM, but they just really, really fell on their face on this one, in my opinion. Let me know what you think. Talk to you soon.